explore the amazing world of sauropods in the world's largest dinosaurs from the American Museum of Natural History. Innovative exhibits including a life-size detailed model of a 60-foot-long Mementosaurus take visitors into the bodies of these titans, shedding light on how heart rate, respiration, metabolism and reproduction are linked to size. This dinosaur show is really about the biology of dinosaurs. What we wanted to do is we wanted to go sort of beyond the, just the bones and really talk about these animals as living, breathing creatures. And sauropods lived on every continent and they lived for a very long stretch of time. So in the show itself, we talk about animals from all over the planet. The giant mementosaurus behind me is from China. Back here, the, uh, some of the dinosaurs are from South America. We have some of the familiar dinosaurs from North America as well. So these things were found everywhere during the entire time of the traditional dinosaurs. In the show itself, we talk about some of the new sciences being done. Cutting-edge science such as CAT scans of vertebrae, electron microscopy, even using trace elements in fossils to calculate age, is discussed through the exhibition. When visitors first enter the gallery, they're going to be met by a neck sticking out of a forest of Argentinosaurus. A comparison of modern animals helps visitors begin thinking about scale and size before they turn the corner to meet the Mementosaurs. And throughout the show, I mean, one of the things we try to do is we try to bring it back to comparisons with ourselves, you know, with people, because I think that it's something that everybody will relate to a little bit better. The Mementosaurus itself, we modeled it so it would represent what it looked like when it was alive on one side, and then on the other side, what it would look like that if you stripped the skin off, as if you had it in a dissection laboratory and you were able to go in and peer at its internal organs. Everything from its skeletal system, its muscular system, its circulatory system, its, its uh, pulmonary system, its lungs and the like, uh, its reproductive system. And we use a, a, a theater on the side of the animal to be able to depict these things as, as the, the animal would have looked like when it was alive. Around the sauropod, we have a number of little stations that talk about different aspects of its biology and physiology. Throughout the show, we try to use interactives to be able to support our message. So we have interactives about how do we know how big these animals got. We have interactives about how much they ate. We have interactives about how the, their, their heart and their lungs work. So you know, we hope that these will, by engaging people physically, that they'll help teach people what we're trying to say. The museum has the largest collection of fossil vertebrates in the world. And throughout the show, we've tried to incorporate some of the pieces into that. We have a, a Camarasaurus femur, we have vertebrae of different sauropod dinosaurs, we have teeth of different sauropod dinosaurs, we have a brain case of a Diplodocus. So in these stations, to show some of these principles, we use things like touch specimens of real specimens that we have. These animals had to eat tremendous amounts. For one of these animals this size to live, it would have had to eat about a five and a half foot cube of food, and we have that depicted in the exhibit. As part of the exhibit, we commissioned a mural to be made of lots of different sauropod dinosaurs. I mentioned the Argentinosaurus. You can just basically see the under part of its belly and its sort of pillar-like legs. Throughout the exhibit, I think that it's very kid-friendly. We've tried to put things at low levels so kids can see it without being lifted up. I think one of the most interesting sections is the reproduction and nesting area. I mean, there we talk about both eggshell and how that uh, the pores in the eggshell allow the developing embryos to breathe through the egg while they're developing. We talk about nest construction, and we have a, a recreation of a nest based on nests which have been excavated in South America. At the end of the exhibit, we have sort of a faux dig pit that's a recreation of an area called How Quarry. Uh, this show, I think, will appeal to people of every age. I mean, we have things that are just sort of neat to look at for people who are either are too little to read or people who read other languages. We also have things that go into depth pretty significantly about animals, so people with very sophisticated scientific knowledge, I think, will walk away from it of learning something. There's sort of a cartoon version of sauropods which are out there as them being sort of, you know, stupid lumbering animals just, you know, walking along not even knowing where they were. But I mean, I think that if you look at their success of living from about 230 million years ago all the way up to 65 million years ago, 
of living on every continent and leaving a very rich fossil record, both in the cases of bones as, as well as footprints, nests, and eggs. I think that's the real measure of their success, and they're one of the most impressive and long-lasting groups of animals ever to walk on Earth.